Buenas tardes. Good evening. I'd like to share some thoughts with you about San Romero de America on the occasion of this Lenten confirmation retreat. But first, let me share with you a story about a trip I made a few years ago to Panama. I was interested in researching uh, Monsignor Marcos Magrath, a former Archbishop of Panama City who had died in the year 2000. I was interested in McGrath because his father was from the United States, his mother was from Latin America. Um, he had had the experience of translating from English to Spanish, Spanish to English, to moving back and forth between the United States, um, Chile and Panama. He was a man uh, from the North and the South, from the South and the North, and that interested me a great deal. I went into the library that is still intact of Monsignor Magrath. And I met Hermana Ines Gonzalez, a nun who had been the secretary faithfully to Magrath for decades, for many years. She pulled a book off the shelf that was written by Oscar Romero. It was signed by Romero and dedicated to Monsignor Magrath. The date of the dedication was sometime in late February or early March of 1980. That's extremely significant date. That's just a few weeks before Romero was assassinated in El Salvador. Hermana Ernest explained that Romero and McGrath discussed the dangerous situation in El Salvador. Romero knew, at least since the time, that his friend, Rotilio Grande, a Jesuit priest, had been killed on March 12, 1977, that his life was in danger. Archbishop McGrath told Romero that he was welcome to stay in Panama until, until things calmed down in El Salvador. Romero could have escaped his tragic fate if he had stayed in Panama. It's important to note that Romero never denied that he was afraid of being killed. But Romero told McGrath that he was gonna be a shepherd to his flock. He knew from the legal assistance reports that 687 civilians had been killed in 1978. And then in 1979, that number increased to 1,796. The recent test of an agrarian reform in March of 1980 was gonna be a tremendous test for the people of El Salvador. The government and the ruling elites uh, tried to stop it and Romero spoke in favor of it. There's two points I wanna make about Romero deciding to stay with his flock, about Romero being a good shepherd. Both of these points have to do with the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are the gifts with which you're gonna be sealed when you're confirmed in your parish. I'll remind you of the seven gifts. They're wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. In the light of Romero's witness, I would now like to talk about wisdom, sabiduría, and fortitude, strength, fortaleza. Romero exhibited wisdom because he was aware of what was transpiring in his very midst. He tried very hard to gather information about what was happening to the campesinos in El Salvador. He had lawyers and pastoral workers and other priests bringing in information to the capital. He would spend all of Saturday with them discussing the massacres, the threats, the problems of the people before he composed that evening his homily for the next day. On February 5th, 1980, just before he met with McGrath, he wrote a letter to President Jimmy Carter asking for help. President of the United States, Carter, by the way, never responded to Romero. Romero's wisdom consisted in seeking out as much help as possible, working in solidarity with the people of El Salvador and admitting his fears. Romero was sustained by his faith, but he never denied that he had fears. Sometimes people treat faith like an antiseptic or a mouthwash. They act like faith cleans out 
all the doubt or the worries that we have inside of us. For Romero, wisdom, true wisdom, consisted in seeing the situation around him for what it really was. In Latin America, the method for liberation theology is ver, buscar, actuar. See reality, make a judgment about it, and then act. Romero had learned how to see reality. He knew that knowing realities is more important than inventing ideas. In biblical terms, he had learned to test everything and preserve what is good. He did not act impulsively, but he had discerned in prayer and through his love for the people that he needed to return to his country. He had become a symbol for the crucified people of El Salvador, for the people of God. This was the reality that compelled him to return to his country. He feared death, but he did not waver from the path of discipleship that the Lord had called him to follow. What kind of fortaleza, what kind of fortitude, courage, or strength did Romero exhibit when he returned to El Salvador and eventually, three years later, would receive, or just weeks later, sorry, would receive a bullet in his chest shot by an assassin as he was saying mass to a small group of nuns in a chapel. Romero wasn't a macho man and he wasn't a proponent of armed revolution. Jesus had taught him to be a good shepherd who was willing to lay down his life for his flock. He had denounced the use of weapons to solve the problems of El Salvador, both by the government and both by the revolutionaries that opposed the government. He knew that Jesus had preached, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Now, I mentioned the death of Rutilio Grande. How did Romero react to the funeral for Rutilio Grande? 1977, for the fourth Sunday of Lent, he gathered together the one mass. He canceled all mass after a process of discernment with the pastoral workers and priests. He called for one mass in the central cathedral in El Salvador, La Misa Unica. Let me play for you now a little tidbit from that one mass. Here's the voice of Romero as he begins his homily. Queridos hermanos, sean bienvenidos a la Casa Solariega de la Diócesis. El más humilde de toda la familia, escogido por Dios para ser el signo de la unidad, este obispo les agradece cordialmente de estar dando con él al mundo que espera la palabra de la iglesia. La palabra de la iglesia que no solo sale de los labios, sino que se proclama por toda esta significativa presencia en la única misa de este día. Welcome to this ancestral home of the diocese as the lowliest member of the whole church family, but chosen by God to be the sign of unity, this bishop thanks you warmly for joining him in giving the awaiting world the church's word. This word of the church not only comes from our lips, but is proclaimed by our presence here at the Misa Unica, at the one mass that is celebrated in the archdiocese today. 150 priests came, a hundred thousand of the faithful were gathered at the cathedral and the rest of the country, because they had radio transmitters, today you would talk about online or something like that, because they had radio transmitters, Romero said they had microphones for Christ. The whole country listened to the words that you just heard. If Romero wasn't under threat before the Misa Unica, he certainly was under threat after the Misa Unica. So how did Romero deal with this fear? What did he say to his priests about the fact that priests were being killed? Were they gonna get angry? Were they gonna seek revenge? No, on the contrary. He said in that homily about the unity that's needed of the priests, I feel that my own weaknesses and my own inabilities find their complement, their power and their courage in this united priesthood. Beloved priests, let us remain united in the authentic truth of the gospel. 
This is another way for me to say, as Christ's humble successor and representative here in the diocese, that anyone who attacks one of my priests attacks me. All together, in solidarity, following Christ. These are the words of a man who's in love with God and has received a courage from God that will sustain him, the other priests, and the people of El Salvador in unity in the midst of tremendous pressure. Now, you might be thinking that a death threat is a more extreme form of fear than you're used to facing. You might be thinking that maybe this supernatural strength only comes to special people who live under special circumstances. But notice how Romero is preaching the complementarity of weaknesses and inabilities on the one hand and power and courage on the other hand. God gives the gift of realism to his greatest saints and to all of us. The power of these realist saints is not a worldly power that allows them or even permits them to dominate others. The power that comes from God is a power to be aware of your weaknesses and podor and strength. Hay que perseverar con y en la fe, pero no como un testaduro. Hay que perseverar con humildad, con humildad. Esa es la fórmula, el ejemplo y el camino que nos dio San Oscar Romero. We have to persevere in faith with humility. That's the formula, the example, and the way that Oscar Romero showed us. Questions for discussion. Do you struggle in your faith? ¿Es para ti la fe una lucha? Do you have times when you experience a desire to be strong in your faith and in your life, but also need to face your fears? ¿Tienes experiencias de un deseo de mantener fortaleza en la fe, pero también experiencia llena de dudas y miedos? How have you reacted when you face these fears? ¿Cómo reaccionaste tú en estas situaciones? Mil gracias por su atención.